Hey guys, does capitalism have you down? Does the constant pressure to be productive get to you? Are you tired of being a cog in the machine? Productivity porn has created a business around making you think that constantly being productive will lead to a fulfilling life. However, this mindset has created unhappy, anxious, and burnt out people. On our podcast, we aim to entertain by providing useless information just for the joy of it and giving you time in the day to stop the gears of capitalism. And if you're thinking, what's the point of this podcast, then we invite you to be a part of the revolution against toxic productivity by embracing the useless things in life. Welcome to episode 24. Yeah! Of the Very Unborn People podcast. <laughs> Do less! <laughs> um, my name is Courtney, and in the last 24 hours, I've had to rescue my cat from near death. <laughs> about okay. five times <laughs> oh poor thing and i'm lydia and this week i have been obsessively binge watching inuyasha <laughs> so we're just like class it's to... very on trend for lydia very it kind of is to just like latch on dive fully into something it's like a hyper fixation except i know i don't have adhd so like i don't understand where it's coming from <laughs> But I still, I, I could still hyperfixate, apparently, like really intensely. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it just makes me feel so happy inside. Aww. And if you also watch Inuyasha, um, let me know so we can talk about it. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it here because I'm sure a lot of you are like, I don't want to fucking hear about this. But don't knock it till you try it. Let me just say that. Don't knock it till you try it. And I haven't tried it, so. She's not knocking it either. I, though, I can't so. knock it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, tell us about your cat. <laughs> um, So we've had this little, Near like, death. kerfuffle in our household where it's been really hot the past few days. Um, And in our bedroom, we have two balcony doors and no windows. But the balcony doors don't have any screens. Mm, so we can't right. get any airflow into, like, the back half of our apartment. And it's so hot. So we've been trying <laughs> to figure out how to, like, put a temporary screen in. Yeah. So we got this like magic screen thing, which oh, cool. is like magnets in the middle and you like push through it. Oh, um, very cool. But <laughs> it literally advertises itself as like great for pets because pets can get through it too so that they don't get stuck inside. But we want our pets to get stuck inside. So we've had to like yeah. make so many modifications to it. We've like oh <laughs> Velcroed it together and like Velcroed yeah. it to the floor and like closed one door and kept one open and like blocked off a section. Oh my God. But every time we make a new modification, I'll walk out of the room and like... I'm going to say 10 minutes to an hour later, I walk back in and Zola is on the balcony. <laughs> and not only is she on the balcony, she has found a wasp's nest, like <gasps> hidden oh, on our balcony. No. And she thinks it's so much fun to play with the wasps. And I always walk no. out and she's sitting there with her pop and there's like wasps flying at her, like no trying to way. intimidate her. And she's trying to swat at them. And oh I have to like... <laughs> jump through the barricaded screen i still don't know how she gets out because it takes me a minute to like tear my way through and like pick her up and fend off the wasps and try to get back inside and she oh just, my god Courtney. and i'm like holding her and she's still like swatting at the wasps, the wasps as i'm holding her in my hands and i don't want to get stung and Shit. so now the doors are closed and it's hot <laughs> because oh. we can't we can't figure it out and can't trust Zola's her either gonna jump off the balcony or get attacked by wasps and i don't think i don't know if she'd die but i've seen pictures Probably where they just not. like swell up yeah yeah but yeah. if it was a lot of wasps i don't i don't know who and knows so what would small. happen yeah oh, so poor thing it's been a little, <laughs> it's been a little <laughs> exciting she doing this yeah <laughs> definitely a little bit of drama i love she's, that for you why why does she have to be like that? I don't Poor know. thing, so curious. Just like wants to hang out with her bug friends. I know. Oh, but little does like, she know oh my God. <laughs> that they There's will sting so much her. Fun. I don't know how she does it. I've like caught her on multiple occasions, like playing with half dead wasps in our house if they get into our house, and I don't. Oh notice. my God. And I don't know how she doesn't get stung. We found one in our house the other day, and like the entire butt of it had been like this is going to be a little graphic was like gone, but the spine was still there. 
Oh. And the stinger was still there. There was just like a space where like the butt is supposed to, and it was gone. Oh my God. Zola is a savage. I don't know how that happened. I think it's like a cat thing. They just like to it. play with their food and like torment it. I get it that, and, like, but I just don't get how she hasn't been stung. I, <laughs> I don't get. <laughs> Maybe... So oh my god that's cat. so weird yeah. yeah seriously she must know something she, she must know something. that like she's not allowed to touch that one specific spot maybe she's been stunk before and like you just didn't notice maybe. and it was super low key and she just knows now that i feel like she would touch that part her, of it though. i don't know i know right i don't know that's so strange oh my gosh she's so adventurous good for her couldn't be me <laughs> no me neither <laughs> that sounds terrifying i, hate it like, so I wouldn't much. do that <laughs> oh, oh my god you haven't been stung have you no i've never been stung in my life by a oh, wasp nice. or a bee which kind of fuels oh, my fear i feel like if it happened mm. to me i'd understand that like it hurts but you're okay yeah and part of my fear is since i haven't been stung by a bee like what if i'm allergic yeah you would have no idea yeah and like i have family members that are allergic to bees and yeah. I don't know if it's a genetic thing. So I've always been like, what if I, I don't want to go into, you know, like have an allergic reaction. I don't want to die. Oh my God. So, so I kind of just want to get stung and just know that I'm okay. Because then I feel like I yeah, would be scared yeah. of it. It's the unknown that scares me. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what's going to happen. <gasps> hmm. Have you been stung? Maybe you'll get stronger. It'll be like a Spider-Man type thing where like your <laughs> power, the second half of your brain is unlocked when Ooh. you were stung by the Ooh. bee. You had I no like idea. <laughs> Some because you've never use been bees stung now as like a treatment to Lyme disease. Yeah, I heard about cool. that. Yeah, I was gonna say like maybe the bees can only like release their stingers consensually, but then I thought of like the Lyme disease treatments, mm-hmm. and they like yeah. don't do. They're like they're like just put the bee there and it'll do it. <laughs> and it's not bees that she's that. playing with. It's wasps. Yeah, and wasps are wasps. scarier they're because ruthless. wasps they can sting you a bunch of times before yeah. dying. And it's not only that. once. <laughs> they use that <laughs> oh what's the point of wasps do they make do they make honey like do they pollinate I literally don't know <laughs> they're just I have no idea survival of the fittest type of creatures i feel like, like if... i feel like we as just an earth could do without them but that's just my opinion i i don't see as a non-biologist i don't really see a point of them being around but that's I don't just, really get it either. Just my uninformed opinion. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they just burrow into like wood that we yeah. have built, and like, what's why? What's the point of that? Maybe they're food, but who would eat them? Yeah, they have stingers. Yeah, and they're yeah. There's venom. It must be an there. animal that's like that can't be stung by the venom. Mm. That it doesn't hurt them at all because they're mm-hmm. like immune to it or something like that. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. I don't know either. I'm just fucking... Man, Zola is brave. Your cat has a lot of guts. She has way too many guts. <laughs> way too many guts. And not enough She'd get her a little bee toy. She's like, yeah. <laughs> she would love it. You're like, holy shit, just like outside. I just want to like, catch her a fly. Just oh, let a yeah. fly go in the house. I feel like that's the perfect toy. It is entertainment for hours, fly, like a house fly. Nothing. It's not mm-hmm. gonna hurt me. It's not gonna hurt her. Mm, that's a good point. Honestly, though, the last time we had a like a fly in our house, she broke like three glasses in the span of like, ten <laughs> minutes. It was insane. <laughs> like she was possessed. Just like <laughs> <laughs> she stepped her whole foot into my coffee. I had like a mug of coffee. <laughs> whole foot in, did not notice. Flung it off the desk. <laughs> Oh broke God. a wine glass broke a glass i was like oh this is God. madness absolutely madness she is half <laughs> that's so demon, funny half cat. <laughs> she's literally a wild cat oh. just i can't believe she didn't notice the hot coffee <laughs> Full <laughs> i had no idea <laughs> oh, oh my god that's so cute she's probably like protecting you she thinks that the fly is gonna get you she's like i gotta get it before it oh, gets I gotta get it my people <laughs> cute cute but polydactyl cat content for y'all love polydactyl cat so cute xo xo gossip girl ah, also a good show <laughs> polydactyl anyways anyway should we move on yeah let's do it <laughs> that was great though what a good intro <laughs>
Okay, guys, this is the part of the podcast where we talk about the poll from last week. As you remember, last week we talked about um, porn and vegetables. Go listen to that episode if you haven't yet. It was a really good one. We're proud of it. So let's get to the poll. Um, The first question was, are fruits nuts? We covered this extensively. (laughs) Guys, there was a right answer to this one. But 74% of you said no. <laughs> Wait, what was the question? Are fruits nuts? Are nuts fruits? Yeah, are nuts fruits. Okay, are nuts fruits. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Are nuts fruits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here we are again with the public discourse just being absolute bullshit. Thank you so much for participating. We love you so much. We appreciate every single one of you that clicked but also- on this dumbass poll. <laughs> Like, I get why you think that. I feel the same way. They shouldn't be, but they are. Right? Yeah. So, check your facts for the next time, maybe. Huh? (laughs) And then the next question was, do you pay for your porn in a resounding 97% no? (laughs) I mean... You guys are delegitimizing the industry. I just hope you know that. I hope you feel some guilt (laughs) when you're jacking off. (laughs) But thanks for your honesty. Yeah, we do appreciate it. You're the best. You're lovely. We love it when you click on our stuff and we love it when you interact with us, you idiots. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. You meme us and we meme back. Okay, we you did get a message it? though. We did get a message in our DMs. This was a good one, yeah. That <clears throat> somebody clicked, no, they didn't pay for their porn, but it's because they didn't watch porn. Right. So, so a lot could of people could have skimmed skewed. past this question Mm. because they are like i don't watch porn so i'm not i I don't have an answer or i don't pay for it so or i don't watch it so i don't pay for it yeah 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 yeah. exactly exactly okay i see i see how that could have been skewed once again (laughs) i played myself (laughs) (laughs) uh so thank you so much for participating you can find these polls (laughs) Please participate. Get in it. We're almost at 800 followers on Instagram. Thank you so much, everybody. We love you. Um, we love you so much. Every single one of you has. We're almost place at in one followers on Patreon. So, you know, yeah. oh, mo- so moving close. up. Almost every day one. we get closer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, check out the polls, please. Tuesday slash Wednesday. We appreciate your input. We love to joke about it, and you're not idiots. I love you guys a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's at very dot unimportant dot people on Instagram. Thanks. My Enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> uh, so my opinion is first this week. And this week, my opinion is that anything can be a country if you try hard enough. <laughs> um, and this opinion Great. is based on the existence of sea land and other micro nations. Uh, which I'll get into in a minute. But first, I wanted to start with the Monte Video Convention. Okay, because this lies the Monte Video Convention. Okay. It's a international convention, and it lies the foundation for the creation of Micronations. So basically, what it is, is um, it's an agreement that was signed in Monte Video, Uruguay, which is why it's called the Monte Video Convention. Oh, okay. Um, in 1993. And so it's international law, and it basically outlines the standard definition of a sovereign state. So it's basically Mm -hmm. a way for everyone to come together and agree on what a nation is. So the convention outlined four basic necessities um, that needed to be fulfilled in order for an area to be considered a sovereign state or Mm -hmm. a country or a nation. Um, So these four criteria, and everyone keep these in your mind as I go through our examples. Um, (laughs) So the first one is a permanent population. Permanent population. The second one is a defined territory. Okay. The third one is a government. And the fourth one is the capacity to enter into relations with other states. Relations, like meaning... international relations, like negotiations or communications. Okay. Or Could agreements. peace be one of the negotiations? Like, we sure. agree to be peaceful. <laughs> sure. That's all they need to offer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, or cool. like trade agreements, just to interact. Yeah. That's what you know? was, they don't need to provide things to trade with, though, no. do they? Like, they can still be. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. They Even just need they to have, be like, no like a part of the international community at some capacity, like operate at state level in some way. 
Okay, cool. That sense. Love that. Wow, sounds easy. Yeah, my house right? is a country. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so basically, this foundation laid the foundation. This these. Whoa. <laughs> These conventions laid the foundation, laid the the foundation. <laughs> for people to start creating, like, nations and states out of anything. Ooh. And one of the most famous ones is the case of Sealand. Sealandia. Um, so I'm going to tell you the story about Sealand. I absolutely love this story. I'm so excited. So during World War II, the British government had built several, like, fortresses. They're like, I don't know how to explain them. They're like platforms in the middle of the ocean off of the north coast of England. Mm-hmm. Okay? They're approximately seven miles off the coast. Um, and seven miles off the coast is more than double. No. Yes, it's more than double, um, like, the three-mile range that territorial waters are. So, you know how oh. every country has three miles off their coast and the three miles is technically their territory? Yeah, so yeah. These and then platforms, it becomes international waters. Yeah, so these platforms are technically in international waters. Cool. Very important. <laughs> um, so there's this man, Roy Bates. And in the early 60s, he tried to establish a radio station on one of these abandoned platforms. Hmm. Um, and the platform wow. was called Knock John. How did he get there? I guess a boat. Oh, okay. I feel like that would be <laughs> the only way to get there. I don't think you could, like, swim. I yeah, I was going to say. Is there, like, a ladder that you yeah, climb up to get to the top of the platform? I, I, yeah. I feel like there must be. I would be. assume so. If you can get <laughs> on it, I would assume so. Um. Anyways, so he tried to establish a radio station on one of these abandoned platforms. Um, and the British government kind of got mad at him and he lost a legal battle to have the radio station there. So he decided, hey, I'm just going to move off of this platform onto another platform and try again. So he okay. moved his operations over to Rough Towers, um, which also lay outside of the three-mile territorial water nice. boundary. So on the 2nd of September, um, with his wife, his son, his daughter, and several of their friends, Roy declared this platform to be the Principality of Sealand. So he Woo! said, you know what? We're moving to this one, and this time is not a radio station. It's a country. Holy shit. And he marked this event by raising a flag, and he made his wife the princess of Sealand. Oh, <laughs> the princess. That's so cute. <laughs> and over the next few years, um, he wrote a national constitution. And he oh. established a currency and <laughs> issued passports for all of the residents that lived on what? Sealand. Which, again, was just his family and a couple of friends. So, oh, my God. That sounds like so much fun. What right? Do you think, oh, my God. What do you think the Constitution says? Like, number one. Okay. It's like... <laughs> you can you can actually... So, Sealand still exists today. Oh, okay? no way. And you can actually... They have a website. You can go online. You can read their constitution. You can listen to their national anthem. You can make national yourself... National anthem. Like a... I forget what it is, but I think it's like a Duke of Sealand. You can pay a certain amount of money and... <laughs> oh, my God. Like, <gasps> knight yourself or whatever you want to do. And you get, like, a little certificate from it. Pay for you our can Patreon go. so we can all become Dukes of Sealand. <laughs> You can go there on boat and get a stamp on your passport for going to the country of Sealand. So they still operate. That is so cool. Oh my gosh, what a great tourist attraction. Yeah. Hmm. Um, So they just live there. Yeah, pretty much. On a piece of concrete. They don't still live there. Okay. Okay. It got a little little rocky. Oh, tea. So after he kind of wrote his constitution and made his currency and made his passports, the UK government started to kind of panic because they didn't want other people to start doing this and just like leaving the UK to build a country. Um, So (laughs) they sent out the Navy and they destroyed all the other forts that remained in the ocean. So Sealand was the only fort that remained because people were on it. They couldn't destroy it. Dramatic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Otherwise it would be war if they tried to destroy that one. We'd be at war with so England. <laughs> while they were destroying the other platforms, um, the Navy got really close to Sealand, and Michael, which is the son, uh, mm-hmm. fired a couple of warning shots at the Navy. <gasps> oh my god! And the since boss. Michael was still technically also a British citizen, he was called to court <gasps> under the Treason? Firearms Act. Oh um, my god! But the judge in this case actually concluded that. The UK courts held no jurisdiction over Sealand because it was outside of 
their borders. It was in international right. water. So they actually couldn't prosecute him for shooting at the Navy. <laughs> So he got away yeah, scot free. Sense. He just That's pretty crazy, but I guess that makes sense. Like if they've been declared a country, then they're good. And also I was wondering if they if people go within three miles of sea land, mm. are they technically on sea land property? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I, okay, I love that. In a way, yes. Yeah. Um, and there's this really interesting thing that happened in 1978 where this guy, Alexander Arkenbach, who was one of Roy's really good friends. Um, stage a coup while um okay hold on so alexander arkenbach describes himself as the prime minister of sealand oh prime minister yeah so he, there's a government so he's the prime minister what is the government because there's a prime minister there's a princess there's a oh princess. i guess there can be a prime minister there's and a, a princess yeah i don't i guess kind of and like the uk yeah yeah sure maybe anyways so alexander arkenbach um in 1978 uh, hired German and Dutch mercenaries to lead an attack on Sealand while Bates was out with his wife in England um, because they had a disagreement on the future of Sealand and they actually took Michael as a hostage. Oh. Um, and they had to... Wait, the British government took Michael as a hostage or people the from Sealand took Michael as a hostage? German and Dutch mercenaries that were hired by Alexander took Michael as a hostage. Oh, shit. And Michael was able to, like, regain control using the weapons on board. Oh, my God. What? This and kid then is insane. <laughs> Alexander, the guy who started the coup, who held a Sealand passport, was charged with treason against Sealand. So he was oh. charged in the court of Sealand. And then Gee. Germany, because Alexander, I guess, Hired is the Germans. German man... Yeah, sent yeah. a diplomat over to Sealand to negotiate his release. Oh my god. So remember that requirement of a country to engage in um relations with other mm -hmm. nations. This was literally a negotiation for someone's release and wow, I, a legal negotiation that... about like this is a prisoner, no we need him because he's our citizen. Yeah. So <gasps> That's so cool. Was that all a part of their plan though? Because like they weren't doing that before, so maybe they just decided to, like, pretend that this coup was happening so that they could become even more legit as a country. So that they had to engage in international relations. Because before that, they didn't really have international relations, right? Other than, like, other they than the Navy. They kind of did because they had down. some, yeah, they had some beef with the UK. Okay, true, true. And the UK saying that they couldn't charge Michael was almost an admission of saying, y you're this a isn't legit country. Yeah. And, like, Whoa. you're not one of our citizens. You're somebody else's citizen. Oh, my God. That is so cool. I can't... How did Alexander get out of that? Because he he wasn't a German citizen, was he? He was a Sealand citizen. So... And Germany was citizenship like... Citizenship yeah. is, as you probably know, a weird thing. Yeah. And some countries will let you maintain your citizenship there if you get one elsewhere, and some will not. Mm -hmm, and I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that Germany probably doesn't have anything that outlands what happens if that outlines what happens if you become a citizen of Sealand. Right. So I'm sure they still considered him a German citizen. And yeah. there's no country, absolutely no country in the world that actually considers Sealand to be another country. So oh. <laughs> they still considered him to be a German citizen. He considered himself okay. to be a citizen of Sealand and the prime minister of Sealand. But yeah. Germany well, I guess didn't really see it that way. Germany got him out of jail, out of Sealand jail, whatever that would have been. They Maybe they him, believe in the death penalty. <laughs> they got him um, out of jail and he was released. And what he did is, I guess he went back to Germany or wherever he was living before mm -hmm. he was living on Sealand. And he formed a government in exile or rather a Sealand rebel government. Oh my So there's God. like a secondary Sealand now that was started this by Alexander. This is insane. Yeah. And that's kind of where Sealand stands today. No one currently lives on the platform anymore. Roy and his family moved off the platform. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe he still travels there like every day to work there. And it's now a tourist attraction. So people go there to get their passport stamps, oh. to walk around Sealand, the nation of how, Sealand. How big is this platform? I can look it up for you. Also, how did they live there? They literally like, a platform in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> built a house on it. Like, there's uh, oh, a whole wow. building on it. And 
if I remember correctly, the disagreement that Roy and Arkenback had was about the future of Zealand. So one of them wanted to like maintain its legitimacy and really push for it to become a recognized nation. And the mm-hmm. other wanted to make it into like a tourist attraction. I think like almost oh. water park, amusement park kind of thing. Oh, <laughs> come to our country. All we have is fun. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So there's like a house built on top of it. Oh. Um, I can't Very figure cool. out how big it is. I can show you. I can't show everyone else. We can post a picture on our Instagram. Mm-hmm. If you check our Instagram, there's a picture up there right now of Sealand. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you can see, it's basically a platform and then there's a big building on top of it. And it's a That's Sealand. a building? It yeah. looks like a tennis court. <laughs> yeah, the building is under the tennis court. You can kind of oh, see okay. it here. <laughs> there you go. You it's can cool. kind of see it in this one. And so wow. they live in this little, well, they lived in this little building. And they had a court where they tried selling for treason and currency. They have a front yard and a backyard. (laughs) Yeah, what else do you need? They don't have grass, so I can get behind this. Really utilizing that space well. Oh, wow. The only maintenance would be, like, I don't know, the storm, the salt. I can't imagine that that's a very comfortable place to live. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. Yeah, I'm not surprised that they don't still live there. Yeah isolated middle of the ocean it must have been fun for a while though Mm -hmm. to be like we are our own nation and they created their own laws and their constitution oh that's so cool that would be cool if it started off as like a dare they were like i dare you to fucking make your own country they had some argument and like it was a dare well i have a couple (laughs) of other examples and a lot of these actually started out in a similar way as like you're saying as like a joke or a dare I love that. Um, so there's the Republic of Usipis, I mm-hmm. think is I don't know how to say no, it. No, Usipis. <laughs> Usipis. No you. <laughs> um, which is basically a neighborhood in Lithuania. Oh. Um, and on April Fools in nineteen ninety seven, people living in the area declared it as an independent nation. Wow. Um in the Republic them. It just it just kind of carried on, and the Republic now has its own politicians, currency, constitution, and even an army of around 12 soldiers. Wow. And good it has them. a population of 7,000 people. That's pretty And it started incredible. just as a joke. They were just like, we are country, ha, ha, ha. And then yeah. people just ran away with the joke, and now it's technically a nation. No one recognizes it as a nation except for Aww. them. Aww. But... <laughs> If no one recognizes it as a nation, then, like, technically it doesn't, it's not a country, right? Because it doesn't have, like, the international portion. See, that's where it gets kind of murky. Mm -hmm. Because, like, the international system of being a nation state is really, like, who else sees you as a nation state? You know, like, Taiwan. Some people see it as a nation, some people don't. Oh, okay. But there's no definitive answer. And in these cases, no other state sees them as legitimate states, but other micronations see them as legitimate micronations. I love so technically, that. they all legitimize <laughs> each other by oh saying God. that they're like legitimate places. That's so cool. Yeah. Aww. Um, we should make a country. Unimportant we could. nation. <laughs> the unimportant nation. <laughs> No one would want to live there. <laughs> <laughs> we would be the only people. <laughs> um, there's the Republic of Molossia, which is um, located in northern Nevada. And it has its own government, currency, postal service, and tourist attractions. And oh it was also founded in 1977 by Kevin Ba for a joke. Uh, um, yeah, and now it's become yeah. much more serious, and its population is about 31 people. Wow, very serious. <laughs> There's a pretty legitimate one. This is probably one of the most legitimate microstates that there is. It's in mm-hmm. Copenhagen. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called Freetown Christiania. I'm sure some people have heard of it. And it's actually like a neighborhood that define themselves as a separate nation state, um, kind of dependent on their values and that they wanted to be eco-friendly. So it's a commune that's located in the middle of Copenhagen. Um, So now it's made up of houses, restaurants, art galleries, and music venues. 
And the society has its own rules and is dependent of the Danish government. And it's basically like environmentally friendly space. That's so cool. So they're just kind of living like... Living their best hippie lives, basically, is what they do. I guess that's legit. Yeah. I mean, in this case, like, the Danish government almost kind of sees them as legit. Because if they're located within Copenhagen and the Danish government isn't trying to, like, make them abide by the Danish laws, then they kind of are their own nation state. Yeah, I guess so. It's weird how you can just steal a country's territory and call it your own. And then everyone's like, okay, fine, as long as you don't cause any problems. Like, you can just live there. Maybe they think that the free nation is like a... It was like a test to see if the rest of the world can live this eco-friendly life that they're doing. So they're like, okay, fine. You can live like that. Let's see if the rest of us can do it too. The more people join them. And then eventually Copenhagen is smaller than the free. What's it called? <laughs> Just keep nation? like expanding. Yeah. Um, free, <laughs> free town, Christiania. Christiania. That second half of the word kind of stresses me out a little. Mm-hmm, because I normally typically associate any sort of like christian living area as like yeah. a cult or yeah. as something unhealthy I so it's interesting that they're kind of not what exactly do they mean by values <laughs> is that the eco-friendly part of it i mean or is i that, remember like, i values? remember watching some sort of like documentary or something where somebody actually goes to freetown christiania and it was basically yeah. like a hippie oh okay. commune i want to say it's not a chill, commune like there's chill. actually like houses and stuff like that but it was very just chill and like lots of artsy like cafes yeah, yeah. and very art galleries cool. and just a cool place to be so it's, i agree with you that man. the second part of the word definitely stresses <laughs> me out as well but i i, I don't think it's that that's kind of cool do they yeah. have their own currency or like do they just exist without money because that i think mm. would be the coolest thing i don't they know just exist with no money i don't think that they be- have their own currency because i think that a lot of people that live within um this nation state still work in copenhagen oh, like they leave okay. to mm-hmm. do other parts of life but a lot mm-hmm. of countries operate off of other countries uh currencies, currencies. yeah so that's a good point it's not one of the requirements mm. to be a nation to have a currency so yeah, it doesn't make it any less legit yeah very cool and then the last one that I wanted to talk about, there's many more. You can look them up. They're hilarious. <laughs> um, I found this one kind of kind of interesting. It's like 21st century. But there's the territory of El, Elgeland, Vergeland. What's with these names, Elgeland, bro? Elgeland, <laughs> Um, And it's an independent digital territory. Okay. Oh my and, God. Where is this okay, going? Okay, wait. No, 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 no. It's not going where you think it is. I can guarantee <laughs> it. Okay. So it defines itself as the borders of other countries. So technically, what? when you cross a border from one country to the other for a split second, you're actually in Elgeland, Vergeland. Just for that split cool. second, they just said, like, <laughs> Technically, all these neutral spaces that are, you know, mm-hmm, borders, mm-hmm. we are that. We, we are, are the all these lines. The new land. <laughs> they are the lines. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So and okay. the population is zero. Because... Yes, that makes sense. I guess nobody lives like you can't live directly on the border because no. I think if you have a house directly on a border, half your house is in one place and mm-hmm. half your house is in the other place. Yeah. So you can't be in like. No, you can live on it time. because it's just for the split second when you're on the border. So if you're like crossing, if you have one foot in one country and one foot in another country, does that mean your body is in the, the Nuka land? I guess so. That's kind of cool. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> you could become a citizen by just standing there, but no, because you, you, know, you, do, you don't become a citizen. You just yeah. pass through. Briefly but don't they it. need citizens to become a legit nation i know that's the thing with this one this <laughs> one's not this one doesn't really fulfill any of the guidelines guidelines, guidelines yeah. that they have to fulfill but it's just kind of funny kind of smart i mean i, I kind of i kind of love that i appreciate like, the okay, creativity there's no more land so let's just take the places in between <laughs> in between all the land that is actually like no space yeah like on a map oh, there's ours. a line but like in real life it's just they're right next to each other yeah exactly oh but if you've oh, ever I left a country you've been to 
two countries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every, everyone in the two country has been there. <laughs> so, yeah. So cool. If you want to keep track of the amount of countries that you've been Double to, it. add one. No, add one. <laughs> add so many. Because it's not like a new one every time. It's just Oh, it's like the same one? Yeah. The, oh. It, oh. Okay, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. I feel mm-hmm. like that would cause a lot of problems if it's like the one between Ontario and like Quebec is one, but the one between Ontario and like Detroit is another one. No, and see, like, the thing is, it's all the same. It's all the same okay. country. Um, and then in 2015... There was a conference held in California that was called MicroCon, and 40 of the world's <laughs> most popular and prominent leaders of micronations came together. Okay? Wow. Everyone dressed up in their respective countries' traditional get-ups. Oh my god. Um, and they said they wanted to come together and discuss their issues and get to know one another, like the UN. Very good. Very yes. good. So they wanted Very... to basically form a UN for micronations, so they all Micro came together. UN. Um, and something that's kind of funny is that a lot of people say that the highlight of this trip, like a lot of the people who attended, was a choreographed battle (laughs) by two citizens of the kingdom of Shiloh. So these people like dressed up in military armor and like did a fake fight (laughs) as a cultural performance for their country. Wow. They showed up. They, they said, really did. We are going to this. We are better than the UN, and we are showing up to this. I love that. I love the dedication. Honestly, that sounds like something we would do. Like we yeah. show up and we just dedicate our whole selves we, to yeah. it. <laughs> Not even a second thought. And we're like, yep, this is what we're doing. Head first. We full like dive. <laughs> if doing something is going up a mountain, we run up the mountain and jump off the edge and just like. <laughs> That's how we attack it. Yes, exactly. And don't plant our numbers. flag as we hit the top of the mountain, too. Like We, <laughs> we use it to, like, boost ourselves off of the mountain. Yes, beautiful. And then high five in the air. <laughs> like, we go the full mile. Just oh. like Shiloh. Ah, oh, that's amazing. I'm so proud of them. Man, I wish the other countries showed up like that. They took it seriously. <laughs> they, I mean, I'm sure everyone was <laughs> laughing, maybe. Laughing, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the kingdom of Shiloh is kind of cool. So it's a one square foot piece of land in Scotland. Okay. That was you declared could... <laughs> independent by Tim Miller. Mm-hmm. Um, and he made his mother the first queen. Aww. But she passed away very soon after her coronation. So then Aww. as her successor, he made himself king, of course. Okay. That makes sense. Of course. Yeah. Next in line. Um, and since then, he's been purchasing pieces of land. <laughs> so, for example, he purchased an entire island. Yeah, wow. Um, and so he's been purchasing pieces of land to extend his nation into other places, to grow wow. his country. Yeah. So Are he p- purchasing pieces of land next to his original piece of land? No, he, he just bought an island. He bought an entire island. He bought, I think, somewhere in the Amazon desert. Like, it was just a bunch wow. of random plots of land. Oh, my God. Scattered around to expand I his nation. appreciate the effort but at the same time i don't feel like that's very practical it's because a little bit gonna, chaotic it's very chaotic <laughs> how are you going to keep track of who comes and goes if you're on the island and someone walks into your one square foot of land you know yeah how are you going to keep track of that <laughs> yeah doesn't really make any sense it's a but little I bit love like the dedication. <laughs> elgaland vagaland vibes e oh uh, yeah I where they're too. like I everywhere Mm-hmm. everywhere but nowhere yeah they're kind of cool love that so I love that yeah in Good conclusion one. anything can be a country if you try hard enough <laughs> take it from these guys all you have to do is say declare a nation you know go all michael scott i declare i declare yeah bankruptcy <laughs> <laughs> declare your nation what were they Declare your nation, define the territory, permanent population. You could de- declare it as your house. You're the permanent population. Have yeah, a government. That's kind of awesome. I'm the queen. And then just talk to other nations. Email another How micronation. Do you talk to other nations. Oh, you can email them? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there's no like. I'm good sure there's more like email. guidelines to how to do each one of these. I'm sure that Probably. the Montevideo Convention was not four lines long. Yeah, maybe. But um, 
probably a little bit more. But yeah, I'm sure there's a little bit more content to it. But Maybe, for just like the purposes of this sentence. podcast, there isn't. So just declare <laughs> your own nations, guys. Just do it. It's so easy. And you can make a cool name. You can make a cool thing. And like, you never know. You might start off as a joke, but who knows? Everyone's going to be really into the idea. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, you know what else is a country? I can't believe I didn't include it on this list. The Vatican. The oh, Vatican is its own country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about that. I heard about that. That's probably like the most famous one. Right. And it's like the smallest like recognized country, I think. Yeah, that one's. Is the Vatican. That That's one's a good recognized. trivia question. <laughs> Remember that for trivia, guys. If someone mm-hmm. ever asks you what the smallest country is, it's the Vatican. It's the Vatican. So you can treason against the Vatican as, like, a country. That's a lot more serious than treasoning against the Vatican as a church. Like, as a country, it's like, oh, that's scary. How would you but commit treason against the Vatican? I guess they want it to be, Vatican. like, peaceful land. What? How would you commit treason against the Vatican? Oh, um, I don't, don't know. Don't you have to be, like, How a do you citizen? You commit treason? I think you have to be a citizen to commit treason. I think treason is, is like... Is the Pope a citizen? Is that a part of becoming a Pope? I guess. To, like, I would assume so. He lives there. He lives in the Vatican? Does he? Yeah. Is the Vatican the church or the country? The Vatican is both. Wow. We can be so many things at the same time. As you're listening to this right now, not only are you in the past, but you're in the present. And the future at the same time. Tomorrow never comes. The Vatican is the Vatican is the Vatican is the Vatican. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yes, people who reside in the Vatican and who work in the Vatican are considered citizens of the Vatican. And there are Vatican cool. City passports, but the oh. Pope does not have a Vatican City passport. He has a Holy See passport. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> Holy Christ. <laughs> the Pope. Holy See. What is a Holy See citizenship? Yeah. So he has a dual citizenship. He's a citizen of the Vatican and a citizen of the Holy See. Very cool. Well, good for him. I hear it's really hard to be a holy see, so, I mean, it's good that he managed to get that done. Have you heard that done. before? No, I'm oh, just, like, bullshitting. I, I totally believe you. I was like, what? <laughs> no. I what guess it's only the Pope can be a holy see. Maybe it's just, like, a group of religious leaders? Yeah. But I would imagine that once you're not the Pope, you aren't oh. holy see anymore. Oh, this just got so much more culty. So the what Holy happened? See is the central governing body of the Catholic Church and a sovereign entity recognized by international law. So okay. the Catholic Church gives him power. And to the be leaders the Holy of the See. Catholic Church have basically declared themselves as their own nation. Oh. Which feels weird. Tea. <laughs> I don't like that at all. It gets interesting. They have too much power, not only religious yeah, but national they have power. So much power. Calm down. Isn't that enough? God. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. That freaks me out. I didn't know that that was a thing. So does that mean like every single priest, like when they're in- indicted into priesthood, they become citizens of the? I don't think so. Catholic I think it's just like religion? the people. Oh, it's a monarchy. Anyways, um, I think it's just the people <laughs> okay. at the top. Uh, sorry, this wiki page is not well organized. Oh, yeah. That happens sometimes. Yeah, I think it's just people who are... At, it's the central government of the Catholic Church. So, no, I don't think it's everyone. I think it's just, like, the really important people yeah, in the, the Vatican, I would assume, are citizens of the Holy See and of the Vatican. But it, yeah, Good that's. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. That's somewhere that I didn't think this opinion would end off. <laughs> At the Catholic Church being a micronation. I just you never didn't know think what's going to happen on this podcast. <laughs> How does the UN not recognize Sealand but just recognizes the Catholic Church? That does not sit right with me. Sealand is way more legit and less creepy. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. 
Let us know I what you I think about that, out. everyone. Mm-hmm. Are you as freaked out as I am about that fact? Maybe everyone already knew this, but I didn't, and I don't. I think didn't it know that either. Do you Gives live in a nation? Ick. Does it give you the ick? Do you have you ever lived in Sea Land or a micronation? Um, any other micronation? We would love to know. <laughs> have you been to a micronation? <gasps> yeah, show us the stamp. I want to see it. We want to take some time to quickly thank this week's sponsor, Bruch. Thank you so much, Bruch. Bruch is an electric toothbrush that will change the way you think about brushing your teeth. With powerful sonic technology and ultra gentle bristles, the Bruch redefines what it means to have super clean teeth. It's like that feeling when you just leave the dentist, a fresh, whole mouth clean every single day. <laughs> Our listeners get 15% off their total purchase with code pod 15 <laughs> that's p-o-d-1-5 follow the link in the show notes and enter the code pod 15 to get your exclusive discount and upgrade your oral care routine <laughs> thanks Bruce. okay guys it's time for the second half of the podcast and this week um i guess i was feeling a little bit nostalgic you know i missed a certain point in my life when having a love and an obsession was just like the best thing in the world and like just feeling amazing about everything so i'm talking about one direction (laughs) Um, and okay and don't okay and if you don't like one direction or you're like oh roll your eyes at these one direction fans blah, blah 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 it's not gonna be really about like only one direction it's more about like a concept about one direction and it's gonna be kind of um in this direction of like one direction versus the beatles like this is the comparison that i heard for like the entire time that i was a one direction fan i mean i still am i'm gonna use like was and like past tense and stuff like that just because they're not together anymore but they're still i'm still a fan even though they're still together in your heart exactly they never broke up that day never happened i blacked it out completely um (laughs) i remember it (laughs) stop I was bawling my eyes out. Anyways, um, <laughs> so I'm sure if you're also a One Direction fan, or even if you're not a One Direction fan, you've probably heard them being related to the Beatles, and you have either been like, oh, that's interesting, or you've been like, what the fuck? There's no way that they're anything like the Beatles, and they it's just a completely different comparison, and like you can't compare their music and like their talent and like their skills or anything like that because there's just no comparison they're just completely different right but people have been using that for so long to like gang up on one direction and be like well they're not the beatles or i I don't even really know 100 percent what the problem is but they're just like well they're not the beatles and you know they're never going to be as good as the beatles and i just kind of try to shove that in your face and like the beatles are good they've managed to stay relevant (laughs) until today and like even back in the 60s they changed the face of music right one direction Mm. the biggest boy band in the world broke records that the Beatles set and people are saying they're bigger than the Beatles just because they broke these records and you know there's new media which helped them a lot there's people a lot more people on earth yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. so like it's hard to kind of compare with that Spotify iTunes like they broke all of these like digital things that were previously set by the Beatles so I don't know in a way like I get it it was huge it was also easier I almost want to say for them to break these records and i think comparing them in terms of talent and influence just isn't it and i don't think that the fans have ever been the ones to be like yeah they're exactly like the beatles and like i have never known a fan who was like doing this comparison like for oh. them it's just kind of a hot debate among people who That's are not I one direction fans. your opinion yeah. was going i thought you were about to like tell me that one direction are the Beatles of our time or like no I have very much I was a little (laughs) apprehensive about this half of the podcast but I am very pleasantly surprised (laughs) that's good that's good okay that was kind of the point of entry because like I know a lot of people don't trust One Direction fans because of how absolutely insane we are so I just wanted to get that out of the way I'm a sensical One Direction fan (laughs) I go crazy I go stupid but I'm not Mm. crazy and stupid I guess is what I'm trying to say um (laughs) So I guess my 
I don't know. Like, the fans couldn't care less about this argument. Like, I don't know anybody who, like, actually gives a shit. And I guess my point is that although One Direction may not have been the same musical influence on the world, maybe, like, historical, as in they changed the face of music like the Beatles did. Like, the Beatles basically invented, like, pop is what people claim, right? But I think that their influence on the generation cannot be denied. So let's get started with the Beatles. Four okay. talented young men starting to make music. It got played on the radio. Once they started making pop music, their fame skyrocketed, mainly among young women. And according to pretty much everyone, they redefined what it means to be famous and what it means to be a band and what it means to write pop music. One Direction. Five talented young men auditioned for a singing show, gained popularity, proceeded to make many consecutive hits, also popular among mainly young women. Did they redefine anything? Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. And there's been a lot of boy bands before. Their music is heavily influenced by legendary musicians, and they don't hide that at all. And as of right now, I'm not sure if they'll go down in history like the Beatles did and be remembered. That's like something that I've kind of like so sad for is that like in 50 years they're not going to be like this classic one direction song like it's still going to be like it's hesitantly you know what played I on think the radio be, what i compare them to in my head is like in sync yeah yeah that's who it, i think the they're... hype was so crazy at the time and then like once it was gone it was gone like it was gone like it just doesn't so that's what i'm, I'm kind of like worried about it will they be remembered as legends i'm not really sure but in a way they might be remembered since their numbers are the new ones to beat since the beatles were previously the ones to beat so if anything they'll be remembered for their record breaking and maybe not so much <laughs> their music <laughs> um over my time as a fan, I've heard much criticism over One Direction, mainly from adults when I was a teenager, mm. from people saying their music isn't even good, their lyrics aren't anything special, and they aren't even really talented at all. My response to this is, did I ask? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> also, does it matter? Does it matter? Thank you. <laughs> like, if, you're enjoy- really- if-, if you're enjoying your time, if you're listening to music... Doesn't just matter. let me enjoy my time and let me enjoy my music. Like, these people are just trying to tell me how pretty I am. Like, why is that a problem? <laughs> They're just trying to tell me that I don't know I'm beautiful and that that's what makes me beautiful. Because I'm, I don't know I'm beautiful. <laughs> so just let me fucking be happy, please. Um, people can just be such haters for literally no reason. Um, but little did you know, you may be surprised to learn that the critics of the 60s didn't like the Beatles either. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. In 1964, at the height of their career, the Boston Globe music critic had this to say. I'm going to read this verbatim because it was savage when I read it earlier. Hopefully it sounds the same out loud, okay? The Beatles are not merely awful. I would consider it sacrilegious to say anything less than they are god-awful. They are so unbelievably, horribly, so appallingly unmusical. (laughs) so dogmatically insensitive to the magic of the art that they qualify as croned hearts of anti-music even as the imposter popes went down in history as anti-popes that should have been their album description on like their platinum (laughs) album (laughs) they should have just thrown it right back in the rolling stones face been like how do you like that how do you feel now what do you what, what now giving them like, like a one percent royalty you. on it too just to be salty <laughs> dude that's amazing they, real, oh my god that would have been the biggest burn of all time like for them to still make amazing. money off of this bullshit ass like not even insensitive to musical arts like just so savagely Ruthless. cruel i couldn't believe it at the height of their career too they were getting this crazy fucking backlash amazing incredible brilliant like i i love for it i stand for it Honestly, people have said similar things about One Direction. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. I completely understand where it's coming from. Now, obviously, that criticism did not age well. Um, People today compare their musical abilities, such as, um, you know, their ability to actually play instruments. I love you, One Direction. Please, I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) Their songwriting abilities, which... I don't know if I'm going to be the first one to say this, but One Direction didn't write, like, any of their songs. Um... And even though at the, okay, so at the same time, like, the Beatles were most famous when they were writing pop, so Mm -hmm. I guess One Direction, like, followed the pop formula and was like, okay, we're just gonna, well, I guess the writers were like, we're just gonna write pop. Um, 
And in terms of doing what had never been done before, I guess it was having a shit ton of fans on both, like, terms. So, I mean, like, w- like the Beatles did it first, pretty much, mm-hmm. is what the argument is. Which, like, fair. They did. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, there's been a lot in between that have done, that have similar fan bases. Like, it's not just the Beatles in just one yeah. direction that are this way. Like, most big artists have a big have, like, fan really base. good fan bases. There's not only yeah, two that have done it. There's many that have done it. I also yeah. don't understand the argument when people devalue a musician's work because they didn't write the lyrics. As long as they're not claiming to write the lyrics, I don't understand why it matters. Like, if that person's talent is being a performer and singing, why do they have to write that music? That's not their talent. That's not what yeah. they're here for. If they advertise themselves as a singer or songwriter and writing is their talent, that's great. That's yeah. super cool. But it doesn't make other people's work any less valuable like they're still good at singing it's just a slam dunk pretty much for the beatles like it's like obviously they get that point because one direction didn't write any of their songs they're not writers <laughs> yeah like it's and just they don't you shouldn't win. have to be yeah you're a performer if you're making like, music exactly and you make and that's music what they auditioned for they auditioned as like singers and performers not yeah. as writers <laughs> that's what you are that's all you have to do yeah i love that Yes. <laughs> they would be a lot worse if they wrote their own songs. Ugh. Like How rude. We don't want them. <laughs> if you can't do oh it, don't gosh. do it. Like Yeah, exactly. Leave it to the professionals. Like yeah. let them. Just let yeah. them help there's you. No, let them help you get big. That. Exactly, exactly. And like even Harry Styles today, like I love you, Harry, but like a lot of his lyrics are very repetitive because mm. like I think he either is still in this habit from one direction of doing these like repetitive type of lyrics, just saying the same thing in a different way. <laughs> kind of situation or if like he's just still breaking into it like he was seen as the person who was going to be like the next Mick Jagger right like everybody's always comparing new artists to old artists and Mm -hmm. what they did for music and it's so unfair like these people are never going to live up to this legendary status (laughs) just I don't know like I think I don't know like I get the comparison of like lyrics and blah 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 and blah 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 and blah 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 because there is no comparison so in my opinion (laughs) we're comparing the wrong things I think Um, so too yeah, like, we didn't, I don't know, like, we didn't care that they didn't play instruments. We didn't care that they didn't dance well. Like, I don't know a single person who claimed that One Direction was groundbreaking. <laughs> like, I don't know a single person who even, I don't know, and even One Direction themselves were like, yeah, we have influences from other musicians. And sometimes they're played side by side and they sound exactly the same. And it's no, it's no tea. Like, no one's putting up a fight. No one's trying to be like, oh, yeah, they, they, uh, they made it an original song. Instead, it's like, yeah, this was heavily influenced. Yeah, they're being upfront about it. Yeah. So They're saying we're not here to write music. No. We're here to perform it. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I think in the end, what the fans really did care about was what the lyrics were saying. The positive impact of feeling good while listening to their music, feeling connected, feeling a part of this community of fans who are uplifting these gentlemen and each other and making dreams come true across the board. And people may roll their eyes at teens who were listening to the Beatles and One Direction, but these bands actually kind of raised awesome generations And I think this Mm. is kind of where the comparison should lie because this is actually kind of fair and still going on like in us, in our terms kind of things. So first of all, let me let me tell you about what happened during the Beatles time after the Beatles time. okay? because this shit kind of gets rowdy. Um, (laughs) um, So according to Wikipedia, which is where I got this information, (laughs) obviously, the Beatles provided one of the first opportunities for female teenagers to exhibit Uh, spending power and publicly express sexual desire while the group's Mm. image suggested a disregard for adults opinions and parents ideas of morality they say it created a generational awareness um they called it a religion of teenage culture and it was indicative of how youth looked to their own age group for social values and role models Kind of cool. So a couple of these songs by the Beatles, Paperback Writer, Rain, Taxman, and Eleanor Rigby, were proved to be social commentary. And the band actually became a catalyst for bohemianism and activism in various social and political areas, yeah. fueling movements such as women's liberation, gay liberation, and environmentalism. Hell yeah. All because these young people were passionate about this fucking band and they 
put their passions onto them of being like social justice warriors, like, you know, gay liberation, environmentalism. And they were like, these are all the important things that you should be worried about. And guess what? Teenage girls have a lot of energy. So we can worry about those things at the same time as being obsessed with a band. Um, their final, like, biggest influence. They had a lot more, but I'm just going to list, like, a couple of them. So this <laughs> this one was kind of whack. I don't know if it's true, but there was this documentary filmmaker, Leslie Woodhead, and she was a former Cold War spy. And according to her, the Beatles' music helped persuade young Russians to defy communist ideology and begin the process that led to the fall of communism through Eastern Europe. If that's I, true, that's wild. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> crazy. <laughs> But I mean, if you, what's that movie? Across the Universe? Yeah, the yeah the Beatles movie, yeah. Yeah, it's a musical, like, with Beatles music, but the whole thing is, like, very political. It's very much a commentary Dude, on, like, yeah. politics and they the had, state of the world. Eleanor Rigby was, like, a commentary on, like, homelessness, I think, and, like, uh, there was a bunch of other ones that were just commentaries on, like, a mm-hmm. bunch of things that were happening in the world and, like, telling people to be aware. There was one song, I don't remember which it was, but um, they had mentioned that um, you know, people who are, like, socially aware and, like, politically active are, like, more attractive and better than people oh. who aren't socially aware and politically active. Okay. Know, right? So, like, these influences aren't bad influences. Like, being a part of this, like, fandom, this, like, mania, which people fucking love to call this shit mania, which is so annoying to me, but, like, I get it, but it's so annoying. Like, chill. Um, but it was actually a very good influence. And I think that this is kind of where the comparison can lie more because it's a little bit more fair. Because for us, it's still happening today. Mm-hmm. So after One Direction, in most cases, and this has been reported in, I don't remember which article, but it says that fans of One Direction are teenagers that are wholly involved in today's world. They fight for LGBTQ plus rights. True. Mm-hmm. Endorse the Black Lives Matter movement. Did that. Encourage the hashtag MeToo movement. Did it all (laughs) and more to come like this there's still so much more time left the Beatles have been famous for like 50 years now and they're still gaining fame blah 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 all this stuff but they had a lot of time to like get this shit down so I think that you know like these they're also going to be allowing us to have the time to show the world you know the positive impacts of being of being a passionate fan I'm Um, wondering if I feel like this is something that you're going to get into a little bit, Mm -hmm. but if these positive effects that we're seeing based on fan base aren't to do with the band, but they're actually just to do with gender and social conditioning, because generally, like, females are more caring and more empathetic and more aware of social issues and care a little bit more about social issues and feel, like, grief and loss and injustice Mm -hmm. a lot more. Yeah. So... It could have something to do with that as well. Yeah, it definitely could. Like, females are freaking powerful, dude. Do not Mm -hmm. underestimate the females. Like, we feel hard and we will fucking fight this shit. We will fight the system. Clearly, like, women are doing a lot better now than before the Beatles came around. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I found a lot of articles, like, about how One Direction impacted uh, the, like, musical history. Um, But I don't know if that's, like, really what drove them to be famous and same can go for the Beatles critics may hate their music um they didn't think they would amount to anything they didn't think they would be engraved in history yet so many people loved these bands so much okay critics I hear you but like chill um the Beatles helped raise the baby boomers to ascend to their power as women as social justice warriors intent on being active participants in the world one Direction supported millennial, uh, young millennials and Gen Z, <laughs> older Gen Z, I guess, wherever we sit, um, realize their importance and to know that you hold value as a woman. Like their lyrics were all about just like being true to yourself and like being the most authentic you you possibly can and like being worthy of healthy relationships, of love, of good mental health, all through their lyrics and all through like their singing and like their personalities and shit like this. Um and even through their actions, they supported charities, they toured the world and influenced people to um, take a look at the world around them through their videos and like kind of brought the world closer together. Like, you know, that term where like you can flatten the world by like interactions between mm-hmm. different places that you see you think might be different, but then you find out what they're actually like and you're like, oh, yeah, we're more the same than we are different. And it kind of flattens the earth a little bit. So I think One Direction um did that they showed other countries they showed other cultures they made people more aware 
um i went on quora (laughs) and there was this whole page dedicated to this one question which was can we compare one direction to the beatles okay and holy shit there was so there was so many like people mainly men i'm sorry men to call you up but i promise this will come back around to 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 you okay to to showing you how one direction improved your lives too um (laughs) um but it was all these like older men being like, oh, well, like, show me when One Direction does this and this and this and this. Oh, wait, that was the Beatles. Like, oh, uh, yeah, One Direction is so good. One of the best uh, people in it was Paul McCartley. The second best was also John Lennon. Oh, did I say One Direction? I meant the Beatles. Like, just people being so, like, stupid and annoying mm-hmm. and just being like, there's no way you can compare them, blah, 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 all this stuff. And the only person, in my opinion, who said anything valid <laughs> was a only woman in the comments. And she said, I'm going to read directly because, like, when I read this, I was like, girl, go off. Like, you got it on the nose. She said, I'm suspicious that the reason so many men are viciously opposed to One Direction has something to do with this power dynamic. Here's the biggest band in the world that basically has very little time for heterosexual males. One Direction's Ascent is about power of women, particularly young women, and the power of modern interactive media over traditional male-controlled top-down model. No wonder you guys are pissed off. <laughs> I just some tea. It was some D- do boiling some tea. hot tea. I sat there. I was like, "Girl, give me my biscuits do because there's just tea. no way." She's I can just enjoy stirring this the tea. pot. She stirring stirred pot. it hard, bro. It was oh my god. I was like, "Go off, girl!" Like you kind of get it. You really fucking get it. And like she, she said a bunch of other stuff about like the amount of like interaction that like people can have with them and stuff. Oh, it was just, it was just amazing. So this kind of led me to this idea of like is. The hate and the critique of whether One Direction and the Beatles deserve their fame largely rooted in misogyny. So most of the main critics <laughs> Courtney Stacey. Most of the main critics of One Direction are from men. And I think that's because they fear the power that young women have. If young women can be so passionate and starstruck by the Beatles and by One Direction to help them to rise to fame, make millions of dollars, what else can we do? Being and passionate. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to add on to like, I just feel like a teenage girls are society's like punching bag. Yeah. As somebody so... who was a teenage girl, as somebody who like sees how teenage girls are treated, if you like anything as a teenage girl, oh you're my just God, some you're like just crazy, the number obsessed, one target. insane thing. Yeah. And like, they'll call you manic. And it's like, <laughs> just, I just, like, I just like something. I'm just passionate about something. I just love something. Like, is that such a crime? Is it so terrible to like, f- like, really deeply enjoy something? Like, have you never felt joy? I don't understand <laughs> what this thing is. But oh, my God. So being passionate about music or about a boy band, um, it can show that you can be passionate about other things and it transfers almost directly, such as the women's rights movement with the Beatles and social or political movements that we are living through right now. Showing you can be a powerful force is scary to those who are used to holding power. Remember that. (laughs) Having the ability to love something so much without shame or fear is one of the reasons why grown men are so quick to dismiss One Direction as some sort of mania. Mm. Literally has been called this mania. And same with the Beatles. Um, I think it takes away power from people who love it and it makes them think they're crazy for obsessing over it. And I believe, as we learned a couple weeks ago, this is called gaslighting. (laughs) I'm pretty sure we're all being gaslit into not being happy and, like, not being obsessed with something. Oh, my God. And, like, also, One Direction's lyrics, they do this amazing thing where instead of gaslighting the fans, the the men who we love so much are, like, thank you. Like, you, you, thank you for being so passionate. And, like, thank you for being so, like, almighty. Like, their song Girl Almighty is, like, all about, like, how strong women are and, like, how much Ooh. that, like, women have done for them, literally. And... It shows respect to women, to young Mm -hmm. women who are, like, going through this, which they literally never see. So maybe they were preying off of that a little bit because they know that they're (laughs) going to look be looked like as crazy. But One Direction is like, no, this is good. Like, be good. Be crazy. We respect you. We respect your feelings. And your feelings are valid. And, like, this is a good thing to have. Like, it just feels good. (laughs) It's, like, totally valid to be passionate about something. (laughs) If you, yeah. Yeah. Like, just fucking chill man i don't get like why people are so upset about it oh 
Okay. Anyways, my final point. Like mm-hmm. I said, I, was, I wanted to bring it back to the men a little bit because I... I don't know. I'm just going to bring it back to the men. We need, because to, you're we nice. need to appease you a little. I'm nice. Exactly. Because you don't see male nice. podcasts bringing back to the women. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if that's true. Okay. So finally, to end off, um, One Direction as a band, like on stage as they were performing, they were like really sweet to each other, like really affectionate. And they weren't afraid of like holding back their love for each other kind of thing. And they would like hug and like, like, I don't know, play little pranks on each other and just be really sweet to each other. And I think what this did for the world (laughs) is showed the world a side of men that isn't toxic and Mm. that is allowed to show love to each other, to other men without feeling judgment. And like you could still be loved by millions of women (laughs) if you show that you love another man as as a homie, like as a bro, and you can hug people without having to be like, but not in that way bro like (laughs) yeah exactly and i yeah they exemplified healthy male relationships and it's honestly too bad that only women like majority of people who got to witness like the magic of one direction were women because i think a lot of men would have benefited from it and Mm -hmm. honestly through one direction women now maybe i don't know if this is true i'm kind of making a stretch might be not more non-judgmental towards masculinity as like an affectionate masculinity because i feel like we've Mm -hmm. been conditioned so much to like see masculinity as being like this tough like exterior and like never show love and like never cry a tear and like always be super non-emotional type of thing but i think one direction is like breaking that and showing us that men can be attractive even if they're not super super manly and super super masculine so if you know a girl who was a one direction fan she probably is really cool she probably doesn't judge men for hugging or being affectionate (laughs) and all in all, I think it's a positive step. A positive spe- step in dispelling male stereotypes. Yeah. I mean, I think there's, de- like, definitely been a turn in younger generations mm-hmm. and, like, older millennials, Gen Zs, um, in, like, straight females liking more feminine males. Yeah. And I think it has to do with the absence of toxic masculinity i think people Mm -hmm. just realized that we don't we just don't have time in the day for that no we don't and you know what i we don't want to suffer from it we don't want our men to suffer from it yes exactly like nobody benefits from it literally and like obvious and like i think one direction is a perfect example of how completely okay it is from the female standpoint for men to be Mm -hmm. affectionate with each other and like they will still be I don't know, valued as men. Like, I'm not 100% sure of what men are afraid of, but you will still be a man. <laughs> yeah. Like, that means so you can many hug things. Your friends. Yeah. And yeah. Show emotion. Yeah. You could do it all. And, like, yeah, I think they were the first ones to start it. And I think that they did a lot for the world, not only for. <laughs> Not only in terms of their music and songs, but also, like, everything they did, all the charity work, all the, like, showing people that you need to be passionate about other issues, not only about their music and about their looks and shit like that. Like, you are allowed to use this, like, energy and this fuel that you have as a as a person who cares so deeply about things to make change and to, like, positively affect other people and, like, literally use your privilege type of thing. And even, yeah, even for your dudes, you're welcome. <laughs> from one direction i'm saying you're welcome from one direction (laughs) speaking through them (laughs) because i think they they did a lot for men as well even though a lot of men don't see it but yeah like you said like it's turning into that direction anyways Mm -hmm. and i don't know maybe it has something to do with harry styles like y'all y'all see what he's up to right y'all see what he's up to and might i say like harry styles doing very feminine things like wearing a dress on the cover of Vogue. Mm -hmm. I think he gained more attraction. Like, I think he became more attractive to a lot of people in doing that than before. So I think that's also a little hint at (laughs) the direction we should be going in and, like, how much we just don't care about this. And, like, people who just are themselves, who own it, who are nice not toxic we love that yeah and they're the they're the That's happiest the best people and it do. shines out of them you know like when you're just being truly yourself like it's just mm-hmm. it just emanates out of you and everyone knows that your vibes are amazing <laughs> 
Yeah, and I was never a One Direction fan. I never particularly mm-hmm. liked them, but I can say that they're one of like the only bands, male bands, that I can look back at and not feel like icky about. Like none of their songs Me are too. really inappropriate or saying something that I don't like. They never mm-hmm. conducted themselves in a weird way. They were never like overly toxic masculine. Yeah, never. Like I feel I feel fine about them. <laughs> we don't need to cancel them, Thank you know? You. Like I, they, they were they did good. A non stand coming guys. from a non stand, yes. <laughs> I think I think that says a lot. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> You're welcome. My boys appreciate it too. Oh, such a tragedy that they broke up. I totally get it. They were probably going to be completely burned out. But I mean, I think they did a lot. And I think they will continue to do a lot through the people who were so passionate about them. And mm. will continue to go on to be passionate about other things. Like, you guys have seen, like, I need to fill the void. <laughs> <laughs> we figured it out, guys. We figured it out. It took us yeah. a whole episode, but we figured it out. This is mm-hmm. why this Lydia is why latches always on to be things. Something. <laughs> I, I'm, Whether it's it was Gossip Girl watching it at double speed yeah. or Beetlejuice. Oh, yeah yeah and now it's inuyasha so it's always got to be something and like who knows what the next thing is going to be you know also though it's not only one thing at a time like you can be passionate about a lot of things at the same time like (laughs) you can fight for for rights and for liberation and for freedom at the same time as like loving anime it's also totally fine to be passionate about things that bring you joy oh that is such a big takeaway from this like Yes. Such a strength of Lydia's. That is what One Direction taught her. Is that yeah. when you're passionate about something, you just be passionate about it. Yeah. You just be loud just, and proud about it. No shame, no fear. Just do no. it. <laughs> it's okay to be obsessed. It's fine. It's okay to have emotions. So that was my um, <laughs> TED Talk slash opinion, which is like that, that, like, just don't, like... Yeah, it started off as like a of like a One Direction versus the Beatles because I've mm-hmm. always heard this comparison, and I'm like, this is just like I totally get why people um like make that comparison because it's so easy for the Beatles to win. Yeah, and it's like so easy to put down One Direction, therefore putting down the fans because there is literally yeah. no comparison. They're completely different. Like, like how can you compare their songwriting abilities? They didn't write their songs. <laughs> Like, how can you compare their musical abilities? They didn't play their music. Mm -hmm. It just, there's no comparison, so it's easy. I do think when you compare their fan base and the treatment that their fan base gets or got when they're popular are quite comparable. Definitely. Very, very similar. Because people, it was literally called Beatlemania. (laughs) Yeah. But you know what? It just goes to show you that, like, young girls are always going to be the, like, I like them before they were popular kind of people, you know? <laughs> yes, like, men yes. are just now jumping on the Beatles train. They That's weren't so on the true. train when the Beatles were popular, but women were all over that shit. Yeah, just love everything. Love everything that brings you joy. Unapologetically. It's a really good. <laughs> a good, like, takeaway message from this. Thank you. I've been, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that for a long time. Like, One Direction, I miss them so much, and they taught me so much, you know? Aww. <laughs> That's so cute. Thank you so much, everybody, for sticking with us to the end of the podcast. This is the end of the podcast, obviously. Thank you very much. You haven't caught on. (laughs) For sticking around, listening to Courtney's opinion about Sealand and about how anything can be a country if you try hard enough. Even this spot right here where we are. (laughs) And thank you for listening to my opinion about One Direction versus the Beatles and about how it's actually about a lot more than that. Thank you for sticking through that. Appreciate you. Um, If you want to see more of us, you can follow us on Instagram at very.unimportant.people. Our Instagram is amazing. Um, And if you want to email us, you can at hatersclickhere at gmail.com. And that's H-A-T-R-S click here at gmail.com. We also have Twitter, which is definitely active by the time that this is going to come out. It's at the (laughs) unimportant PPL. (laughs) We have TikTok. And we'll see you next week. (laughs) Uh, Have a great